But the so your family then you've alluded to John and Ben. Uh, when did they start uh, playing? I started teaching John when he was nine. Mm -hmm. And I taught him for a year. And at that stage I'd been going to Angus for lessons. Aye. And I said to Angus, will you teach your John? Aye. So it was at the time it was difficult because I was working shifts and various things. But anyway, he got, he got a lesson every week for many years off of Angus. Uh -huh. And he, he instilled in John the good thing, which, which a, lot, a lot of the good players don't seem to appreciate. Mm -hmm. John was in, but well, in particular, but the same as a lot. They've been taught well for day one. Uh -huh. They don't understand why other people just don't do it right. I know, I know. Aye. Aye. They, don't, they just don't get it. Why sometimes you don't get two low G's and a two low, you know? Oh, no. I mean. No, I understand exactly where you come from, but we didn't get that type we, of tuition. We never got that kind of tuition. No. Was young, I should have done. And you could say, well, the guy that taught you should have done, but he was just teaching me to play in the grade two bar, me. Aye. He was not teaching me to work. But I don't think that teaching was anywhere near the standard that it is now. No, no, no. no. I think the, the, the standard of tuition now, and that's why I've got so many brilliant young players. Yes, of course there There's a lot of them in there. I, I, I don't know whether to feel sorry for them or happy for them, but there's a lot of the young fellows out there going to look for medals and they're not going to get them, but they're not far away, you know. Aye, but you can get in a tune in C grade now, and there's, there's no bad players going into these. Let me tell you, I'm, I mean, I'm one of the few, you know, if, if not the only one. The years ago, I used to pick up the other prizes in the Open when the four was grading. Uh huh. Then I got prizes in the grade B when I was demoted. Okay. Then I've had prizes in the grade C when I've been demoted. There and you there's, there's not many people come down the hill like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we'll stick with John for a second. He, he went on he, he, and he received lessons, and then when did he go into some more serious stuff about his attrition and the certain thing? John? Aye. Well, as soon as he went to Angus, Angus is in, I think Angus took him in the first day he was there. I'd, I took him up and he could play most of his movements, and he could. I never taught him any I think I, I, think I did the first variation of uh, Macintosh's I met. Aye. Just. Uh -huh. Because that's a, that you like if you don't like people. Somebody says they don't like people. Show them how to play that, and that Aye. changes their mind. But he went to Angus, and Angus gave him the first day he was there. A march of spray and blue on a, a ground of it's a, it's a Mackay's barn, no Mackay's barn, Macintosh's barn. Aye. When he was ten, and he played his first competition when he was ten. He couldn't play a strass spray and blue. He played the march competition, the beaver competition. Uh huh. When he was 10. No, I guess a lot of time into John. And then, what happened to him after that, John? Well, I still went to Angus off and on for years, then he went to Jimmy Young, he went a spell with uh, Weekend McDonald. Uh huh. And um, then he was off and on. And he's working with the. Uh, he goes to Roddy, and the Roddy keeps him there. Uh, Aye, National Piping Centre. Um, he teaches in the Piping Centre. I said he's been, been 10 years at the Piping Centre. And has he been teaching there? Yes, sir. Uh huh. What, does it do anything else apart from teach at the Piper Centre? He's involved in various other projects. Christ is a kind of, I don't know what you would call it. It's a group of players he's involved with. Uh -huh. And he does folky stuff. Aye. He does a bit of composing. Uh -huh. not, not only for, not only for bagpipes. Uh -huh. well, he's, bu he's busy, but he's, he's decided he's, he's not going to compete for the time being. But his life is piping. His life's piping, that's it. Aye. And Young Ben? Young Ben's the same, he's a big, uh, big player now. Uh huh. He works here with me. So it's. Right. If you take John, for example, John's never earned a penny in anything else. Even he went to Glasgow University, even when he was at university, he, he worked at the College of Piping mm -hmm. in the afternoons and taught the Wednesday night and Saturday classes. He went away to Australia for a year, he played with the Queensland Police. Uh huh. And he worked for old Sandy Campbell in, in uh, Brisbane. Then he came back here and Roddy gave him a job at the college, at the piping centre. So all, he's all he knows is... It's piping. piping. Aye. But it's been a, a good life for him, no doubt. Aye. He's happy. Aye. Why wouldn't he be? Exactly. Exactly. And he, he did uh, very well with his, his prizes when he was competing. Aye, I think the year, before, the, year, the year he gave, he decided to stop competing. He got second in the gold medal holder. Uh-huh. I said, I don't want I don't need to do this anymore. Aye. Aye. Just when the just when the thing's going well, he's talking. Uh, 
the thing is, it's not all about competing either. It's but the way you'll find out is, he's, uh, he's, he's doing a talk at the Peabody Society Conference this year, I think it's in March. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be here to go, to go and listen to him. It's, I'd like to hear it, because he's, he's got different ideas of how Peabody should be playing. Mm -hmm. so, he was a bit of a disciple of Alan McDonald's at one time. Well, we know that we know, we know Alan that. and the uh, folk can look at his interview. It's mm. very, very interesting, actually. Uh, I would say John. It's, it's a, John's John. He's, he just does it his way. Ah, but his, his ears are open to various ways. He's a good teacher. If I need somebody, if I need any guidance, is I'm, I'm going to play somewhere. I'm going to play for John first, and uh -huh. do this and that and the next thing. Okay, that's good. That, no, isn't he's, it? That's what he's doing. So I'm much proud to see you getting in uh, over the, the PC. Still playing very regularly, get Brian. Playing with just played before you came. Uh huh. Kind of work out, eh? So when did you start? Uh, well, you were thinking about in South Africa. Did you do much when you came back from South Africa, or was it years later before you started to work from the house here? Well, I started working for the house about 1980, 1990, because I was going to Angus for lessons. And, uh, I made a couple of sets of pipes very unsuccessfully, and then I decided to make plastic pipes. And uh, tell us about the brush handle thing. Well, that was a that was a kind of shall we say a detour. Uh, you, I but it's well, a nice detail. And it's quite funny because I met you up at Pit Lockery, the, 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 the Blair Athol was it? It was a while ago. Aye, it was a while ago, <laughs> and the. Uh, I said to you, yeah, pipes are sounding well, and just off the platform, and he said, come here over here, and he showed me. Uh, so tell me, what did you show Those me? Those ones, well, that was, that's one of many experiments. Ah, uh, tell us the about it. The way it came to pass was I was working with, trying to make pipes of various kinds of wood, and uh, out the back of the, the workshop out there, there was an old brush, an old brush line there for two or three years, out in frost and snow and rain. And I picked it up and I was like, still straight. Mm -hmm. I said, surely if you can still stay, you can make drones at it. Aye. So, I all need to say, it was only, it's only a 25mm diameter. So. What I did was I make, made the, the bottom joints out of that and then I just put a plastic cover over the top of it and the mount. So, it looked, so you, it you slid the, the brush handle into the plastic. Say, yeah. And of course you're looking at black plastic and yeah. you couldn't tell uh, yeah, it uh, if what was going on inside the black plastic. Yeah, so. And it was actually it was actually good for stocks, surprisingly enough. I'd lined some stocks with that stuff as well. Because it, I think it kinda it kinda dulls the sound inside the stock. Aye. But if you get black when you get a certain sound, even plastic stocks you get a wee bit a wee bit harder, harsher sound. Aye. And with that you can get a smoother sound out of that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It give you a fuller sort aye. of aye. It's kinda dull, it's kinda, kinda flatter sound, you know. And so how long did the brush handle oh, set last? They lasted long. After that, I made a, a tough no set. That was an experience. Hey, you better explain to folk what tough no is because you and I know way back the, the 50s, 60s, and all that sort of yeah. stuff. But tough no was a tough no was a material, an insulating material they used to use before they had certain plastics, and it's made of linen, rolled up linen, about sheet form, of sheets of linen bound together with a binding agent, a kind of gluey stuff. But the, the, the round stuff is just rolled up linen with a, a kind of binding agent on it. And um, it comes in various hardnesses and various things that come whale brand and halibut brand and various things. I found whale brand was a bit easiest to work with. So I made a set of tough no, I made a set of stainless steel ones. How did the stainless steel thing work? Well, I lined them with brush. <laughs> <laughs> it was just. Stainless steel tubing lined with brush shaft and Aye. titanium mounts. You know, <laughs> I remember once, there's, there's, there's another piece to it, the stainless steel pipe. I was in the committee of the Scottish Pipers Association and I was to be the, the warm up piper for one of the, the knockout competitions. Okay, right? uh -huh. I think at the time it was Alistair Gillis and Stuart Little. And it was in the Ingram Hotel. Right. In Ingram Street in Glasgow. And one of the things, I bought myself a nice new waistcoat. Uh -huh. A Lindsay Tartan waistcoat. No, Lindsay's got a dark tartan. Uh -huh. Lindsay Tartan waistcoat. Just, I was running out my shirt and my trousers. 
and I was the, I was the guest. I was the warm up with these stainless steel pipes and a stainless steel chanter, and I'm there with my lindsay a dark waistcoat, and, and people are looking as if I'm stupid. Cause <laughs> what? A, what a did you take into account? All the waiters and waitresses all had the same tartan waistcoat. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that a lot of the people that we didn't know, they were just one of the waiters going up to play this. Aye, this is quite good for a waiter, aye. Eh? So how did the, the chanter sound it? It's only noted, the chanter wasn't stainless, but the chanter was made out of duralumin. So that was that was a bit easy to work with. Like and a, what a sort of compound is that, duralumin? It's an aluminium, uh, they make aeroplanes out of it. Aye. So you have a fair idea where I got with you. Yeah, yeah. Because I worked at British Airways. Aye, aye. Yeah, I've seen practice chanters made out of that, but sure, many years ago. It's lovely material to work with. You work in Rolls Royce, they would use a lot of material. Yeah, that's what I mean. Aircraft yeah. components, generally uh -huh. speaking. Yeah. But you, you tried to harden it hard to your steels. Hey, no, not for a chanter. No, I wouldn't I wouldn't, no, have, but I wouldn't have used my, put my remus in the hard, hard stuff. No. You know? Because once you start working with real hard steels, you start to use diamond cutters and all yes, that stuff. Yes, I know, I would. And it blunted very, very quickly. Well, the problem is, that, that, my finishing rima now, I've had it for oh, 20 years. Aye. It's only been sharpened once in 20 years. Aye. But that just does the. Aye. That does the last, the last cut inside. Yeah, yeah, it, aye. So I'm not, I'm not going to put that into steel then. No, no, no because that would just wreck it. Because every time you sharpen it, it takes it all the size of it. Like well, it, it, that was, say, my uh, game in the Rolls Royce. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my last job before I joined the police was a tool and cutter grinder. Oh, well, where did you cut it then? Uh, so, you know, I knew how to take a tenth or a thousandth of an inch off uh, a bit of metal. It was just one spark and that was it. And that was the tolerance as you're wanting to. Fortunately, making bagpipes, you're not wanting to these kind of no, tolerances. No. But what sort of tolerances are you wanting uh, to when you're machining, uh, like some drones or chanting? Well, if you're talking about the boards, well, everybody these days uses gun dolls. You can order a gun doll to within half a thing, doubt. Aye. You okay. always get the same. The gun dolls always give you a, Aye. a two. They shiny finish through the bushes. Everybody uses gun dolls these days. What, uh, so, what's the tolerance that you button uh, when you're measuring your phone uh, finished product? The outside, I'll work to the outside, maybe plus or minus 10,000. Mm -hmm. So, that's all decorative, that doesn't no. really matter. Well, I mean, you just too big a step for good amount. Aye, and good but what, you, uh, what about your uh, inside bores? Well, that's, 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 that you get the size the gun dolls give you. So that's and gun so last for years and years and years. So it's a uh, half a thou. Half a thou, half a half a thou. Of, okay. of the size it was last time. Aye. The human hair for the viewer, incidentally, is at oh. one and a half thousandth of an inch. So you worked a third of that. Yeah. So just to give four yeah, but that's uh, that's an idea of what we're talking about here, you know. I mean, everybody will think it's, uh, it's overly technical, but it's just the size the gun doors will give you. Aye, but uh, the thing is, it's no technical when it, it gives you the, the, the finished product or otherwise, mm. you know, because if you're out with your tolerances, you're just producing scrap, mm. you know. So you've got to be a trifle careful. Oh, it's only wood, I know that, but it's, 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 you've got to do the best with it. I mean, you're, you're talking about cutting down. I mean, when I, I made a couple of sets of pipes when I was up at the college, the pipe major Angus MacDonald was there. Uh -huh. And he'd say, I had my pipes. He said, oh, no bad sound to say I pipes. He says, well, you make me a set of plastic pipes. I says, you see, you see this? Ah, he says, that. Ah. I says, well, he says, well, you make them the same as these ones. Mm -hmm. I said, ah. So that was a Friday. He gave me the pipes for Friday to be the Tuesday. And as I said, I worked in, it's probably one of the best tool rooms in Ayrshire, except in Ayrshire. Yes. Uh -huh. They're the best at measuring the equipment. So I took them into work on Sunday, too. Oh, Sunday then. Measured them all up, all the fancy sizes that I could work out. And even the stocks were a, were a kind of, wasn't it, a standard size. Uh -huh. Anyway, I got all the sizes and took his pipes back up to him. When am I getting the pipes? I said, I'll take a week or two, or maybe more. Because just at that stage, they were looking for somebody to go to the cutter grinder. Right, okay. And nobody really wanted to do the cutter grinder. No, it's boring work, <laughs> isn't it? Well, I hated it. <laughs> I wanted to know. Oh. 
how to alter reamer sizes, yeah. sharpen reamers, Aye. and make step drills and various things that you do, you do in the cutter grind. So I went to the cutter grind for about, about three months. So in that time, I had uh, made, all, made all the reamers and all the same size, same as Angus's pipes. Okay. And the bell at the top, I measured the bell at the top and used liquid, it was a liquid uh, latex. Uh -huh. Pour in liquid latex, let it set, then you pull it out and then you measure the bell. It's really quite a clever way of doing it. Wouldn't it mind you, somebody told me. Aye, right. But, um, and then I made these pipes for Angus. Stainless steel mounts and plastic. And I gave him up, two up to the college and he... And... I tell you, Angus, Angus could have made an old washing machine in the shoulder sound. Aye, I know. So I, I made know. them sound good. And I don't know what ever happened to that set of pipes, I have to say. But uh, he paid me for them. And, very much, you know. It, I got, I wanted it because I got, I got the sizes of the pipes, you know. It's you know the plastic pipes. I took a set across to Bermuda. Uh, when I crossed the scope, I gig for the police band, and uh, I said, and I was saying at one point, I, would I play with the local crowd? Mm -hmm. The RCMP were doing the gig. And we were supposed to go in the next year. And I was just going across to see the, the lie of the land here. And I ended up taking a set of McCallum uh, plastic pipes that had just been made on the Monday. And I flew in the Wednesday. Got a bag, the usual stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and Kenny said, Don't need to bother about taking them into the cabin or anything like that. I mm -hmm. said, Just uh, fling them into the hold. So they went in the hold along my, my, my normal case. And I took them out on the Thursday. They, they lay in my uh, room, I didn't blow them. And I took them along to another room where there was a bit of whiskey flying about with the RCMP and some, some good papers there. And uh, let's hear them. And the only trouble I had was a double tone in the uh, drone reed and I sorted the bridle there. And they weren't like, mm. uh, they went terrific. Absolutely, I never astounded us. Just a set of pipes, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I played them for about ten minutes or something, and they were fine, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I, the, in an appropriate dry climate, eh, okay. eh, they're, they're fantastic. The, the folk in Arizona and all that sort of stuff. Apparently, they they love them because they don't have any problems with humidity. I used to sell a lot of plastic pipes in America. Aye, but then McCallum's can make them cheaper than me. So <laughs> that's the way. That's business, isn't it? But the, the the fortunate thing about the uh, bagpipes is the market's big enough for oh, everybody. Big, big, big. It's a huge it's market, a market, you know. I'm not struggling. And they, no, and you'll have plenty to keep you going. Um, I think we'll move out to your wee button bin or whatever your workshop and just give folk a, a, a real look and. Uh, well, come because I'll give it a good, good clean up for you. Come. Aye, that's good. So we'll shut off this uh, end now and uh, we'll move through to Ayrshire Bagpipe.